Hello everybody, John here with Performance Plus Tennis. In today's lesson, we're gonna talk about the timing and the role of the non-dominant arm on the serve, and particularly the tossing arm. And I get a lot of questions about the timing of that, and of course, there's a lot of different theories about it. Oftentimes we hear coaches say, you gotta keep your arm up, you gotta keep your arm up. Other coaches say different things about, about the tossing arm. But we're gonna cover that today, and this is gonna help you not only get more power, but also have better control over your serve, understand the timing of it much, much better. So this should really help you improve your serve performance. The first key about the non-dominant hand or the tossing arm is that once the ball is released, we see a lot of recreational players that'll just kind of let the arm fade. It'll just kind of fade or fail to really get high. But if you look at every single high performance server, once the ball is released, they very deliberately continue to raise that left arm up and get it at least vertical. We're gonna see it get vertical. And in some cases, we'll even see it coil back beyond vertical. And the role here is to get into a good, strong coiled position where you can generate power. And there's no exceptions. There's not a single pro out there that's tossing the ball and dropping the arm, okay? So the arm has to get up there. So film yourself or have someone look at your serve and make sure that you're doing everything you can to place the ball and then get yourself really into that nice vertical position. And when you do that, what happens is, is that once I let the ball go, my shoulders will naturally want to follow my hand. So from this point forward, the angle between my torso and my tossing arm really remains the same. Look, here to there, because I'm not going to go like this. It would be very unnatural and awkward. So naturally what happens is that once the left hand releases the ball and rises, the shoulders follow, and I get into this nice 45 degree angle without even thinking about it. Okay, and that's going to really help load up your upper body. And we're not going to talk about the legs and the role of the legs in this lesson. That's secondary. That's another part of it. But we're just going to work on what the left arm does here. Okay, so release and extend with very strong purpose. And at this point in time, I'm stretching that left arm up and back. And I even feel it all the way from my lat all the way up through my hand. So it's loading me into a strong position. And that's very, very important. No matter how high your ball toss is, no matter what your tempo is or your style is, you gotta get that left arm up. Now that we've established the position you need to get into, what is the timing and the movement that happens next? And this is so important because we hear coaches all the time saying, keep your arm up, keep your arm up. And I have students that come to me periodically or players that play in our tournaments and they're keeping the arm up and they're actually swinging and keeping the arm up and it's literally blocking you from getting the rotation in your body that you need to generate the power. So the left arm can't stay up. It loads so that it can uncoil and be the catalyst to get your body to move, okay? So once you place the ball up in the air and you get into the stretch position, depending on the timing, the height of your ball toss and so forth, your left arm is going to go, John, it's time to play and it's gonna move away. And when it moves away, it's gonna naturally trigger the swing to come to the ball. Because when my left arm pulls away, my body's not gonna stay still, okay? Now again, we're not getting into the legs, but the legs are gonna play a role in pushing while the left arm pulls away, and then the swing is gonna catch up and, and go to the ball without you even thinking about it, okay? Now, if you watch most pros, virtually every single pro, when the, when the racket drop gets to its lowest point, it's almost always matched by the height of the left hand. So the left hand moves away first, and the racket catches up but the left hand is actually in its holding position when the racket gets to the bottom. And the reason is, is it's controlling your body during the critical stage of the serve of the swing up to the ball. So when you're here, you've already made your move and now you hold and that helps stabilize and hold your body. So the left arm has plays a critical role in, in controlling what you do with your body. And it also plays a vital role in the timing of your swing. Now, for most servers, and you'll see this amongst pros, the left arm will pull away as the ball begins its descent. Most pros are tossing the ball about 24 to 30 inches above the contact point. So when they see that ball beginning to descend, that is their cue to pull the left hand away and then push with the legs and up they go for contact. And that is the timing mechanism. If you're mistiming your serve, more than likely you're just miscalibrating what you're doing with the left hand. Oftentimes you might be pulling it too early and that causes you to swing early and maybe that causes a hitch. Or if you're allowing the ball to drop too late, you're just pulling that left hand away too late and you're hitting the ball low or you're hitting it in the throat if you're reaching up. So I would say don't pay so much attention to what you're doing with your swing as much as you're gonna pay attention to what you're doing with your non-dominant arm, okay? So obviously there's a lot more components to the serve and a lot of other things to, to work on and calibrate, but all things aside, this is the key element that's gonna help you coordinate and, and time your serve. 
Thanks so much for watching today's lesson, and I hope you get out on the court and work on the role of the non-dominant arm and see how it imp improves the performance of your serve. And let me know in the comments section down below. Please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, share this video with a friend, but I don't recommend you share it with one of your opponents that you're trying to beat. We don't want to improve their serve too. Thanks again for watching today's lesson, and we'll see you in the next video.